Network. In the last lesson, we learned what is your MG, how you can create your first widget blueprint, and how we can add it to the viewport. Notice how the placement of the button is changing based on the aspect ratio of our window and how sometimes we can crop through the button. This is definitely a behavior you don't want, especially when your project is going to be displayed on multiple resolutions, multiple screens, some of them horizontal, vertical, and so on. How can we design a user interface or how can we place elements and tell the engine, hey, always keep this in the corner or always keep it in the center or on the side. For that, we use the canvas panel. So let's click on step and let's open our user interface. This is the widget we made in the last lesson. And here in the hierarchy, we see we have three elements. We have the canvas panel, the text and a button. Now I'm going to quickly, quickly create new widget. So right click user interface, widget blueprint, and I'm going to select user widget and give it a name. Let's call it canvas panel and let's open this. Now, before I add the canvas panel, what I'm going to add is a button. So I'm going to click and drag this button and this will fill the entire space, that's one thing we've noticed. The first settings we're going to see about this button are the appearance. That's almost everything you see, but what if you add the button as a child to the canvas panel? So I'm going to right click and I'm going to wrap the button with and I'm going to select a canvas panel. So click, notice how the button now have a smaller size, a more specific size to be accurate. We have this anchor icons and if you click on the button here, notice how the first setting here is not the appearance, but it's the parent of the button or the parent of the element. So anytime you add different elements, you're going to see different settings depending on what you add and in this scenario we have the setting slot canvas panel slot and then we have anchors position x and y size x and y alignment size to content and z order so the first setting here is anchors and now i'm going to close the canvas panel and let's get back to our view here so this is already the root element of my user interface and i'm going to click on the button and let's talk more about what we see so the first element here we see anchors and if you click on anchors you're going to see these icons so this is the top left corner this is the top center of the user interface and this is the top right and this will fill the entire area so let me elaborate so if i click here the anchors will be exactly in the center of the screen now i want you also to notice something on the position x and y so i'm going to press ctrl z notice how the position x and position y we have 980 232 these are the positions exactly from what and they are the positions relative from the anchor point so when i bring the anchor closer to the button in this case let's say the center now the position instead of 920 is just 20. So Ctrl Z, 980, sorry, not 20, and here 20. And this anchor here, if I click on this corner, then it will move to the right top corner and the same for the other corner. So for example, now, if I move the button here as close as possible to this corner and let's click on play now, and I'm going to click from this side and I'm going to move my window. As you can see, the button is always anchored to the corner from here. Okay. Okay. Now let's keep going. In terms of centering the button, how do I center this button exactly in my screen and at the center of the screen? Well, let's talk about centering the text. So I want the text here to be always in the center. We use the anchors for that. So I'm going to click here and that will move the anchor for me. Now here's a little shortcut for you. You can notice that here we have hold shift to update the alignment to match and hold control to update the position to match. So the alignment is this and the position is this. So if I hold control for the position and I click here, you can see that the position now, the text moved with the anchor and for the alignment to match. So here we have the alignment. We have also X and Y. You can change the alignment, for example, to set it to 0.5. And now this little area is in the exact center. So the text here is basically in the exact center, but this text here is beyond this area. And that's because we need to enable size to content. So if you click here, this is now is exactly in the center. Now that's very important to know size to content. When you create something, you can either set the size 
on the X and Y manually, like so, let's say I want the size on the X to be always 300 units or 600 units or pixels in this scenario, and the size on the Y to be, let's say, 60 units. Now, as you can see, this is always centered. And if we set the alignment back to zero, it will be from this top left corner. If I set the alignment on the X to one, it will be on the complete opposite side. So these values here are between zero and one. Now. Let's press Ctrl Z a couple of times to bring this back where it was. So on the corner here, and I'm going to enable size to content. And now if I add anything on the text, this will always be dynamic. Make good art today. See, the size now is dynamic based on the content we have. Now I'm going to click on anchors and I'm going now to hold Ctrl and Shift together. Click and this will be placed exactly in the center and it will also set the alignment for me on 0.5 so I won't do it manually. So let's say I want for this to be in the center of my screen then I would press Ctrl and Shift and click and now it's in the center of the screen and it also updated the alignment on the Y to 0.5. Now if I click on play and if I change the size this will always, always, always as you can see in the center of the screen or the view because we set the anchoring to be in the exact center. Now, there will be scenarios where you want for this to be, so this is, here is a surprise. By the way, you can click and drag to open this icon or the anchor. So the elements will be in the middle, in between. And of course, if you do that, you may need to change the settings here. So the setting we need to change in this scenario is the offset left. If you set this back to zero, this will be exactly now in the middle. If you change this here. So now if I click and drag, it will change. And there is a shortcut you see in the bottom center of the screen. It says hold control to update the widget position. So if you hold control, this will always update the widget position. Now, the widget, as you can see, it's always on the left or the text is always on the left. And that's because the alignment or the justification of the text is always on the left. So if you scroll down a little, here we have the canvas panel slot settings. Under that, we have the content, which is the text value. And under that, we have the appearance. So here we have justification, similar to any word editing document, text editing document. You can align text on the left align it in the center or on the right. So let's say now on the center and now I click and hold control. And as you can see, the text is always in the center. So now you can open and close these panels here or these little icons in interesting ways or if you want to fill a specific area. So let's say I want to fill my entire screen from left to right then I would press here, let's hold Ctrl and Shift to set the settings. And as you can see, it's taking now the entire space for this. Now, this is a text. What if you want to add something else? So let's, we will expand on different elements in the future as we go. But let's say now I want to go to common and let's add a border. So here we have a border and the default values of the border is 130 or any element you add actually on the canvas panel will have these settings. So let's say I want for this border to quickly be the background of my text. So I would click here, press Ctrl Shift, click here and increase the size here like so. Or let's say I don't want to increase the size. And notice, by the way, when we click on this button here, the size on the X is gone because now it's filling the entire area on the X axis. So if you also want for Y to be gone, so we want for the border to fill the entire area of our whole screen, then we would click on this icon here. So I'm going to click first without Ctrl Shift. And as you can see, this is now filling my entire space. So if I hold Ctrl Shift, this will also fill my border with the entire space. But we don't want that. We just want it to be on the top like so. And now the size Y is 1080. And I'm going to set this to just 80. And I'm going to set, let's say, the brush or the brush color, the alpha, I'm going to reduce this to something like 0.2 and I'm going to set this to a black color, for example. Now, the text and the border, so the border now is on top of the text. If I want the text to be on the top of the border, you can either do that from here, so click and drag the text, so for the text to be on top, or this is special for the canvas panel, you can change the Z order. So I'm going to set this to one. And now we have the text on top of the border. Now, if you click on play, 
you will see that we have a black border on the top that will always fill the entire space and the text will always be centered hey just a quick note if you are enjoying the lesson we're doing today i just wanted to let you know that i have a course with more than 45 hours of lessons similar to this where we dive deep into every setting to build our own system with blueprint so if you are serious about learning blueprint check out the link in the description and let's get back to the lesson to recap let's say now i have this button i want for this button to be in the exact center of the screen then i would go to anchors click ctrl shift click here and that will be in the exact center left side of the screen and now i can change the size let's say i want the size to be 80 or no 180 and the size on the y to be 80 or 40 and for the position let's say i want for this to be 40 pixels on the x axis so here on the position x i would press 4 0 and now this is 40 pixels away and it's always in the center of the screen so now if i click on play and you can see here that we have the button always centered in the screen so now if i click and drag it will always be 40 pixels away from the side as you can see yeah to quickly recap when you add any element under the canvas panel it will have the petal or the anchors icon you can change this from here or you can change it from here and you can use the shortcuts let's say you want another border on the left side so i'm going to press ctrl d to duplicate the border and now i'm going to anchors and i'm going to press here and as you can see this will fill the entire space but if i change this now like so so let's say 250 and let's say I don't want this border for now real quick. You see, if we add buttons later, this will be like a nice taskbar. For that, for example, you can use a vertical box. So here's a vertical box. You can add it under the border. Click on the button, add it under the vertical box. And now if we create duplicates, UMG is amazing. The more you learn about the different widgets and the different panels and the different things, you, the more you can do with it and the lovelier your designs will be. So we were recapping things. We talked about anchors. I hope this is now very clear. Your homework is to experiment with different locations on the screen, create a text, create a button and see how it anchors on your screen. And don't forget when you click on play to set it to new editor window and then try to resize the window. You also may want to experiment with the settings based on the anchors and see what settings are changing. When we are using this icon where we align things from the complete left to the complete right, sometimes alignment may not work as intended, at least now on the X axis, but the Y is going to work. So sometimes you might change some values in the UMG and you don't know like why it's not changing on the X. Like if I want, if I change my justification to the left and I set the alignment to 0.5, this is supposed to take it in the middle, right? Yes, right. But the middle, we should also select this element here. So now if I press Ctrl Shift, now set the alignment to zero. This will be like on the left and set it now on the 0.5 value. And now it will be aligned based on this anchor. I hope you found this useful. Let me know in the comments if you want me to cover any specific topics. As always, thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one. Take care.